The news is excellent for Victoria this morning. No new cases found in the last 24 hours, and that's from a huge number of tests analysed too. So it's looking very promising for this five-day statewide lockdown to finish tonight, although the Premier has made it clear that even if that is the case, there'll be some rules that remain like masks and household limits. We're expecting an announcement from Daniel Andrews at some stage, and we'll bring you that live here on the ABC News Channel. We haven't got a time on that just yet. Reporter Steph Ferrier joins us now from Melbourne. Steph, g'day. So as a Melburnian, how sweet was it to see those numbers come through in the last half hour? Oh, Joe, it's just fantastic. I think a donut day has never been sweeter. Those triple zeros that we saw across the board. So no, no new local cases and uh, also the uh, overseas ones acquired as well. So we have once again gone back into the zeros. Uh, that's fantastic news. And also the number of people who've turned out for testing as well. I think Victorians have to take a bow. There was something like 39,258 test results returned. So it's amazing to see that sort of turnout. And that gives the government a really good baseline to be able to come up with their decision. We also saw just yesterday, we only had two local cases uh, and they were both household closed contacts uh, of previously found people in this cluster of 19, the Holiday Inn Hotel cluster, and that also been under isolation as well. So yesterday, health authorities were saying that they weren't terribly concerned about those two new cases either. And so speculation now about whether this lockdown will in fact finish tonight. Yes, so this morning we have had confirmation from the, uh, to the ABC that a high-level meeting is taking place with senior government and health officials as well just to make that final decision. Now, we are expecting an announcement at some stage before Parliament sits uh, at midday. So hopefully at some stage this morning we will, as Victorians, all find out whether we are going to be finishing this snap five-day lockdown. And the ABC has also, uh, you know, heard that, uh, especially given these latest numbers, that we are really well on track to be able to come out of this lockdown as planned at midnight tonight. There could also, though, still be some restrictions that will remain in place. Yesterday, Daniel Andrews did say that the decision would be made whether or not we go back to the previous settings that were in force on Friday before we went into the lockdown or whether or not, in his words, we have to ease back into it with potentially some extra restrictions around increased mask use or maybe at the moment we've got this 5K limit, whether or not there's any further limits on uh, movements if that uh, radius is expanded any further or things like that. So we're going to obviously get more details about that, uh, hopefully uh, relatively soon and Victorians can breathe a little bit more easier again. And Steph, just take us back a couple of steps. How did this outbreak start and spread. Yeah, so if we just look back again, this all started with the so-called index case. It was a family of three and they came in with the particularly virulent uh, UK strain of COVID-19. There were a lot of questions as to whether or not uh, the person that was involved in that, the man who later went into intensive care, uh, had told authorities that he had a so-called nebulizer, which is like a machine that uh, spreads uh, medication through sort of water droplets and whether or not those droplets went out into the corridor to infect others. Uh, so he claims that he had told authorities. The authorities initially had said that they hadn't been made aware of that. So uh, the main point was that that's where they believe that this spread could have started. It went out to workers. So there were some four workers and then several other close contacts as well as two extra guests that were also on that floor. And that forced the evacuation of that entire holiday in hotel at the yeah. Melbourne airport. And Steph, I might just and make the point we are showing some shots at the areas. moment of the Holiday Inn, but it's not the correct Holiday Inn, that's the Holiday Inn in the city. It was the, yeah, it was, so it was the Holiday Inn at the airport that was yes. where the, all this happened. Yes. Yeah. So that was an evacuation that happened due to water damage yesterday, yeah. which was a completely separate event to the Holiday Inn Airport. And what the authorities really were keen to look at was 
a particular spreading event which happened with one of these Holiday Inn hotel workers. Unfortunately, she did not know that she was infectious at the time that she went to a family gathering at a private dining venue, which is in Coburg in Melbourne's north, Saturday week ago. Now, that was attended by 38 people and quite a few of them have now tested positive as a result. She actually went to work the following day and had a negative test, but after a couple of days had tested positive and once they'd got another person from that event that also tested positive, they went back to that original test result that had been taken on the Sunday and realised that in fact that was a false negative of all things. It's a very rare occurrence. It was actually a weak positive and that's so unfortunate because it meant that they were concerned that the virus could have been out there in the community unawares uh, for a couple of days at least. So that is why they'd taken such a cautious approach and they have said that they are retesting all of those 38 people. Obviously they've come back as negative which is fantastic but uh, let's hope that we've really completely got our ring, uh, our arms around this cluster which is now at 19 and that it doesn't go any further and uh, that we can get out of this lockdown. Yeah. And Steph, uh, yeah, Georgie Tunney, one of our sports reporters, has just sent out a message saying the Australian Open my mind might have given away what this decision is because they're apparently now selling tickets to both the day session and night session from tomorrow. Uh, Georgie says, uh, yeah, the tournament's been a source of much, much controversy ever since the world's top tennis players started arriving in January for quarantine. Last Friday it was announced that there will be no fans in the stadiums for the immediate future in line with the lockdown measures, but something is different this morning. Tickets are available to purchase for both the day session and the night session from tomorrow. Um, at the time of writing this piece, geez, uh, for, for one of the arena, the Rod Laver Arena. <laughs> Jeez, it's not cheap. I haven't bought a ticket there for a long time, but 330 bucks for Rod Laver Arena. You're going you're gonna to be going there, Steph? Uh, I'm afraid my budget doesn't stretch quite that far. <laughs> so I'm just hoping that when they come out with this announcement, I'll tell you what I'll be doing, is hoping that my son can get back into local footy, a first uh, training session on Sunday perhaps. So yeah. all of those questions are going to be asked. What happens to kids' sports? What happens to school? Are we still going to be in home learning for the rest of the week? So yeah. uh, there's a lot still to come out of this today. And Steph, just before we leave you, yeah, you, you haven't heard a time on that Daniel Andrews media conference just yet? No, I haven't heard any time. All we've heard from our state political reporter, Richard Willingham, is that it's believed it's going to be before Parliament sits at midday, so at yeah. some stage this morning, with any luck. OK, Steph Ferrier there, reporting from Melbourne. The first Australian-made vaccine has rolled off the CSL production line. The AstraZeneca injection will be the vaccine most Australians get. Reporter Alexia Atwood joins us now from Sydney. Alexia, g'day. So when will the first AstraZeneca vaccines be going into people's arms in Australia? Hi, Joe. Well, AstraZeneca has said that it is working at pace to try and bring the first doses of the vaccine into the country. It's not sure what state it's going to land in first, but they do say that the vaccines will be ready to put into people's arms early March. Australia has managed to secure around 54 million doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine, and about 50 million of those are going to be locally manufactured in Melbourne by medical giants. CSL. Now, we have also learned from AstraZeneca quite recently that it's best that the two doses of the vaccine actually be administered about 12 weeks apart, and that is going to provide people with better protection against COVID-19. We also know that some countries have been hesitant to vaccinate those people who are older, over the age of 65, but the Therapeutic Goods Administration in Australia has said that the vaccine is safe for anyone over the age of 18. They just say that it will be administered on a case-by-case -case basis for those over the age of 65, but that those people are having a good immune response. Now, this approval comes uh, six weeks after the UK started rolling out the AstraZeneca vaccine, and that overseas data uh, that's being provided around the world is really giving local authorities 
that extra confidence about the local rollout here. Uh, Liz Chatwin, she is the president of AstraZeneca Australia. She spoke to the ABC a short time ago. She addressed misinformation that has been circulating about the virus, but she has said that the results show that uh, this vaccine, is uh, the efficacy is very good. What we know today is that the AstraZeneca vaccine is 82% effective at preventing symptomatic COVID-19, and that's when it's given at a dosage interval of 12 weeks apart, and also reassuringly, 100% effective at preventing severe disease, hospitalizations, and death. And Alexia, what's happening with the vaccine rollout in New South Wales? Uh, well, Joe, the New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian is going to be holding one of her is holding one of her regular Wednesday crisis cabinet meetings now, and there she is going to be discussing, hoping to finalise the state's coronavirus vaccine rollout plan. Gladys Berejiklian has made it very clear that she does want the first uh, doses of the Pfizer vaccine, uh, which are going to be rolled out from Monday, to go to people involved in the hotel quarantine system. And the Prime Minister Scott Morrison has backed that decision. So she has said that this vaccine will be going to the doctors and nurses who are dealing with people who've contracted COVID-19, who've returned from overseas. But it's also going to be going to uh, everyone involved in that system, the, the police officers, the security guards, the baggage handlers, all those people working at the airport and on our borders to try and uh, provide extra protection uh, around this very complex hotel quarantine system to try and stop the virus from seeping into the community as we have seen it happen many times before uh, in New South Wales, not many, but several notable times across New South Wales and across the country. Uh, I've just gotten word that Gladys Berejiklian is going to be holding a press conference at 11am today and there we're going to be putting questions to her about the amount of vaccines, uh, the amount of doses that New South Wales will get and how quickly uh, it will take to administer those vaccines to those hotel quarantine workers. And Joe, we have gone 30 days now with no new locally acquired cases in New South Wales. Okay, Alexia Atwood reporting there from Sydney. And on the ABC News Channel, we've got a program called The Vaccine, hosted by Jeremy Fernandez. Uh, that's your one-stop shop for everything you need to know about the rollout. That's 7.30 Eastern Daylight Time on Fridays here on the ABC News Channel.